Hello, fellow adventurers. I'm Lauren, and today we're going to explore the incredible story of Kinich Hanapakal, probably the most famous ancient Maya ruler known today, whose tomb at the site of Palenque is a literal treasure trove. Let's dive into this captivating journey. Meet a very youthful looking Kinich Hanapakal, who ruled the ancient Maya city of Palenque in the 7th century. First things first, Palenque, or Lacam Ha in ancient times, is nestled on the mountains of Chiapas in southern Mexico. Before Pakal came along, Palenque wasn't that big or powerful, and things had gotten very chaotic. But then, a 12-year-old Pakal became the ruler, or what the Maya called Ahau. And wow, did he change the city's history. The Maya were never unified, but instead there were a bunch of different powerful centers or cities that all fought for control and power, like Palenque. During Pakal's long rule, he transformed Palenque with some major building projects. He even built a luxurious palace and next to it a temple that would later become his final resting place, known as the Temple of the Inscriptions. Now here's where things get really exciting. On August 28, 683, Pakal passed away at Palenque, but he was over 81 years old when he left this world. In fact, he's one of the longest lived rulers in world history. Fast forward to the 1950s, when archaeologists discovered Pakal's tomb. First, they found an 80 foot long stairway filled entirely with rubble. That portrait of Pakal that I showed you earlier was actually found deep down amidst that rubble. After years of digging, the archaeologists found an enormous sarcophagus. It's actually a single piece of limestone, and it's super heavy. The people who constructed this tomb actually carved the burial chamber into bedrock. Then, they placed the sarcophagus in it, and it was only after that point that they built the temple up around the sarcophagus and burial chamber. The 80-foot tunnel connected the burial chamber to the shrine all the way on top of the temple. Clearly, Pakal was such a planner. The sarcophagus has really intriguing decorations, but that's a story for another day. Now, inside this stone coffin was Pakal's body. He was 5 feet 8 inches, which was big for his time. His body was all covered in something called cinnabar, which was a special toxic red substance reserved for royal burials among the Maya. It was believed to keep his body fresh for the afterlife, and it also symbolized the rising sun and rebirth. But wait, there's more. What truly sets Pakal's tomb apart, besides the massive sarcophagus, is the incredible amount of jade found inside with his body. All this jade was supposed to help him in the afterlife. He was covered with pounds of it. He had jade rings on every finger, and he also held a jade cube and sphere in each of his hands. He's also wearing large jade bracelets. He wore a large beaded collar around his upper body, and he even had a jade beat placed inside of his mouth. In each of his ears, we find earrings in the shape of flowers. His face was also covered with a mosaic mask, meaning that it wasn't a single piece of jade, but rather multiple pieces of jade that were attached together to a backing. All of this jade was a super rare and valuable green jade that we call imperial jade. The bright green of imperial jade was a color that the Maya of this time period seemed to particularly like, and it was different than some of the other colors and shades of jade that earlier cultures like the Olmec preferred. Now the mosaic mask that covers his face transforms it into a symbol of eternal life and vitality. The mask signifies Pakal's everlasting existence. I mean, just think of it. As his body aged and even decayed, his face would forever be alive, with his eyes open and his face eternally youthful. Now, jade was used for offerings in royal and elite burials. Its durability and beauty made it a symbol of preciousness and wealth. And jade was hard to come by. It was found in one place along the Motagua River in Guatemala, making it a precious and sought-after resource. Crafting it was a labor-intensive process involving grinding, cutting, and polishing, which took hundreds of hours for a single piece. It's literally as tough as steel. Jade was considered more important than gold in Maya culture. Because it was so important, jade ornaments were often passed down as heirlooms. 
But Picard's burial with such rare and valuable bright green jade emphasizes his significance. Because not just anyone could wear jade, let alone be buried with it, so it sets him apart as a ruler or a howl. Jade wasn't just precious as a material because it was scarce though. It had associations with water, maize or corn, fertility, and power. So it was a material filled with vital essences. The green color represents the sprouting of maize, which was an essential crop in Maya society. Having jade all over Pakal's body also transforms him into the powerful maize god. When the maize god died, he awaited his resurrection and renewal in the waters of the underworld, inside a mythical mountain at the center of the universe. Just like when maize is sown into the soil, here, the temple of the inscriptions is like the mythical mountain, and Pakal is the maize god who is reborn in the afterlife. It's pretty powerful symbolism of what's called divine kingship, and how objects like all this jade help to communicate that Pakal was divine or godlike. So, Kinich Hana Pakal's tomb and its jade treasures provide a captivating glimpse into the 7th century Maya world and gives us a sense of how important it was to prepare a ruler like Pakal for the afterlife. That's it for now, adventurers. Who knows what fascinating stories from the past we'll uncover next time.